Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna tackle the water pump, get that ready, and do a bunch of other stuff that needs to be done while we're waiting for the heads to get back from the machine shop. We got a lot to do today, so I'm gonna try to move it along as fast as I can. This is the repair manual I'm using to help with all the information in this video. I purchased this timing belt kit from Amazon. It has everything you need to do your timing belt. Since I'm already in there and I have to take all this apart, I'm not going to put the old stuff back on. There will be links in the description if you're interested. Even though there's an o-ring, I still have to put RTV sealant underneath. Before I install the water pump, I already cleaned the surface that it's going to mount to on the engine block. I used an acetone and a plastic scraper. Not at the same time. Using my quarter inch drive torque wrench, I tightened everything down to 104 inch pounds. Starting from the inside out. I'm just showing you that this bolt had red Loctite on it and how it mounts in the new bearing. So I'm going to use a wire brush and clean that up real quick. Like brand new now. And then don't forget to put your Loctite on. And this gets torqued down to 33 foot pounds. The old one is the one on the top, the new one's the blue one on the bottom. But you got to transfer the bolt and the sleeve, and it comes out the back side. So I'm just showing you not to forget that step. And this one gets torqued down to 19 foot pounds. Just so you know, 12 inch pounds equals 1 foot pound. So you can do the math. That's the last piece of the puzzle. I was able to unplug that and get the harness completely pushed out the way. And this is what the connector looked like. It unplugs like a spark plug boot. Now I got plenty of room to get the new head in and torque it down. I used baling wire to secure it out of the way. So now we're working on the cross tube for the coolant system and I'm putting brand new o-rings on each end. This way, I don't have to worry about them going bad because it's kind of hard to get to them once the intake and everything's on. Now I'm working on the spark plug tube seals and they're pressed in just like if you were to press a crankshaft seal or a cam seal. And you kind of got to pound out the metal ring and deform it so you can get a grip on it to get it out. Uh, notice I'm hammering away from the valve cover because the valve cover is made out of soft aluminum. This is how I did it. It did scratch the cover a little bit. If you have a better way, go ahead and try that. I used white lithium grease to put in the new seals so it would make it easier to hammer in. 32 millimeter socket. 
the side up. Another option is an inch and an eighth. That seems to make it easier to get it flush with the cover. Again, I'm using white lithium grease to make it easier to put together. These zip ties worked out really good because it was easier to put this thing together. I can't imagine doing it when they're loose. Those zip ties really helped on this set of rockers because those inner springs want to spread out the rockers and it makes it hard to line them up. One thing I'd have done different is I'd have got longer zip ties because where those zip ties connect to each other, they kind of get in the way. There's two different size bolts. The longer ones go on the ones with the springs and the shorter one goes on the other one. I set the drill clutch to number four so I don't over tighten them. This is the tightening sequence. You're basically tightening everything from the inside out, or the middle to the outside edges. I'm putting a little motor oil on the o-ring surface before I put the new o-ring on. This kit comes with two o-rings but they seem to be a little bit larger than the o-ring I took off. Uh, but you can actually tuck them in so they do fit and they do work and they don't leak. Uh, it just takes a little finessing to get them in there. I kind of use this flat screwdriver to help work it in there. It was a little frustrating at first, but take your time so you don't scratch or nick the seal. Uh, and I ended up putting most of the slack on the top so I could see it. And then I pushed it in from there and started hammering it down and moving the plate back and forth and would take the slack out and actually push into the groove without pinching the seal. This is the cam seal for the sprocket side. I'm using a piece of galvanized two inch conduit to put the seal in. The sprocket has a built in keyway.
Using this spanner wrench and my torque wrench, I tighten it to 67 foot-pounds and I have it set up on the bench here because I can't really hold both at the same time and, and keep the head from moving. We're looking at the head closest to the radiator, and this is the sprocket with the firing order. You can see the numbers on the sprocket. Before you rotate the sprocket, put the head on some 2x4s or something to keep the valves from hitting the table as you rotate the cam. A couple of things I want to point out. I actually think that a regular wrench and a screwdriver, for me, out of the car, it works better than this thing. The thing's kind of bulky and heavy, and when you got it on the part you're working on, because it's so heavy, you're actually pushing down. So then when you put your feeler gauge in there, it actually feels like it has more drag than it should, because it's like working off this teeter effect. So I push down here and then stick my feeler gauge in and that'll give me a more accurate measurement. With this, I can leave it on here and try not to put any pressure on the tip. All you're doing is turning it. So you don't really need to push down and then I just run it all the way down until I can't pull the feeler gauge out. And then when I back off the screw, just about when I start being able to pull the feeler gauge, you can kind of feel it drag and you pull as you pull it out. That's about where I stop. And then I lock down the nut. Okay, this is the cylinder head that goes near the radiator and it's numbered in the firing order. My idea, is I counted the teeth on the sprocket and ended up with 16 in between the notch. When number one is at top dead center on the other head, this notch is lined up with the notch on the timing cover. So that means the number one cylinder, which is the back one near the firewall, is at top dead center. So what I did is, that's considered my number one, and then I skip a cylinder to number two, and I skip another cylinder, three, and that's basically the firing order for the back sprocket. This is just what I came up with because it's out of the car right now and that back one on the firewall is gonna be pretty tight. So I'm gonna double check it. Once I get it in the car and the timing belt on, I'll rotate it and I'll double check everything. But I should be able to just get the feeler gauge in there and just double check without having to loosen anything and, and torque everything down. Do it your way or whatever way you feel comfortable with. I'm not telling you how to do anything. I'm just showing you what I did and We'll see at the end if it works out. Before installing the heads, set the number one just to the right of the timing mark, and then the rear one just to the right of the timing mark in the relaxed positions. That way your valves won't hit anything as you're installing the head. For the crank, I have it just to the left of the timing mark so that the pistons aren't all the way up and they're down far enough to clear the valve. Here I'm chasing all the threads for the head bolts and we're getting ready to clean the surface off camera right before we put the heads in. Because it's so tight back here in the backside of the motor, I'm putting the catalytic converter in first, just laying it there, 
and then I'll put the head in after that. If I had to do this again, I'd remove the studs that hold the catalytic converter to the head and then put those in after I set the head because it was interfering and hitting the catalytic converter as I was trying to set the head down. Holy Did that just go on? Sure feels like it did. I'm gonna use a mirror and look around all the edges of the head in the back to make sure it's actually sitting on it the way it's supposed to before I put in the head bolts. It is on. I went with the six-sided head bolts because that's what came off the motor. I'm coating all the bolts with white lithium grease, making sure to hit both sides of the washers and making sure the heads of the bolts are lubricated too. When you're torquing down the head bolts, the book was saying that if you hear any binding or anything like that, you have to start over. So this is gonna ensure that they torque down smoothly. Two thousand one through two thousand six. We start with twenty nine, then we go to fifty one, and then seventy two for the torque rating. And that's the tightening sequence. Again, use a mirror and check all the way around and make sure it's sitting all the way down. Because you don't have the valve covers on yet, at this point you want to cover everything up to make sure nothing falls inside the motor. This is how tight it is to get to the catalytic converter bolts. You can see the firewall right there. And I'm using a flex head ratchet to get around the catalytic converter. Time to do the timing belt. Take your paint pen and take your old belt, transfer the marks to the new belt. Earlier in the video when we installed the heads, we moved the timing mark to the right of the timing cover. Now we have to turn it counterclockwise so that the timing marks match up with the timing cover on both the front and rear cylinder head before we install the timing belt. Making sure not to rotate it a full turn, just enough to back up to the timing marks on the cover and sprocket. Now on the crank, we want to line up the timing mark, turning it clockwise just to get to the marks on the block and the crank. Here I'm showing where the timing mark on your belt should be matched to the sprocket and the back of the timing cover on the rear sprocket and the front sprocket. Keep the belt tight as you go down past the idler pulley and the crank, making sure the marks stay in the same spot. This side of the timing belt needs to stay tight and then this side of the timing belt can be loose. This is the old timing belt tensioner. We're replacing it with a new one and it has a pin in it to keep it compressed. And these are the mounting bolts, they're 10 millimeter and they're gonna to be torqued down to 104 inch pounds. After it's installed, then you just pull the pin and it'll put tension on the belt. After the timing belt's installed, you wanna use a ratchet and you wanna rotate the motor by hand at least two or three times, making sure the pistons and valves aren't interfering with each other. Time to double check your valve adjustments that we did on the bench and making any adjustments that are needed. 
Looks like my plan worked because everything feels good so I don't have to readjust anything. I don't know if it helps, but I'm going to dump some oil on here and make sure everything is lubricated real good before I put the cover on. Here I'm just trying to show you that the seal is kind of slotted so the thermostat fits in between the slot and the seal. And that little button needs to be at the top position. And that tab on the seal needs to be right above it. That plastic was getting in the way, so I took it out and put some tape down instead. The fuel rail has these two bolts that are hard to get in there, so I'm going to use some tape and shove the bolt on here. That way I can get it to go where I need it to go without falling off. Okay, the bracket's in now, and the three bolts, the one that's hidden under here, they all get torqued down to 28 foot-pounds. The lower timing belt cover fits in this groove on the upper timing belt cover. Now we're installing the serpentine belt tensioner and the smaller 12 millimeter bolt needs red Loctite. And I did have to clean up the edges, take the paint off of this tool. I don't know if you can see that. Because it was a tight fit and I still had to hammer it on. So I just used this to clean up the edges a little bit, make sure it could fit the harmonic balancer. Just so you know, that big socket does not fit in that hole.
Now it's time to install the spark plugs. I just used a piece of tape in my socket, or you can use a piece of fuel line. That's up to you. This 10 millimeter bolt is for the fuel rail. Notice it's a little shorter than the other bolt for the electrical harness that goes across the valve cover. And there's four of each. I'm giving it a once over to check the electrical harness and make sure everything's plugged in before I put the intake on. Again, cleaning everything with acetone and using the plastic scraper so I can get it ready for the gasket. Don't forget to grease the threads. I like to turn the bolt backwards until you feel it drop and you hear it like a little click and then you know the threads are lined up and then you when you drive it forward you won't strip the threads. I'll do it on this one for example. See you heard the little pop? I'll do it again. There we go now I go forward and then you're in the threads. And here I'm using my drill and I'm using the clutch on the drill at the number four setting which I know will put like maybe two pounds, very little pressure, just to run the bolts down before I go to torque it. And I'll still do it in the tightening sequence. And this is supposed to be 16 foot pounds. These bolts are smaller, so I put it down to one, which is pretty much, I mean, like a little snugger than hand tight. All these 10 millimeter bolts that I've put on the engine, they've all been torqued down to 104 inch pounds. I couldn't find it. Maybe later I'll put it in title at the bottom if I could find the torque setting, but I'm going to torque this down to 104 inch pounds. Back in the day, when everything was cast iron, you can just kind of feel it and you knew you're good and tight. But now, because everything's aluminum, you got to make sure you uh, use a torque wrench. Don't forget this coolant line right here at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this coolant line that goes on the bottom of the throttle body as like a, a vent. So when I put the coolant in, once I see coolant coming out of that, I'll shove it on the bottom of the throttle body and then reconnect that. So then fill up the coolant the rest of the way. Keep your eye on this hose. That's where I'm hoping coolant will come out. It comes right off the top of the thermostat housing. So if I get coolant that far, I know I got that much coolant in there. Oop. 
there it is. Okay, we know we got coolant that high. Unfortunately, now I got coolant all over the place, so I gotta blow off the engine, make sure there's not any leaks that came from that. Well, I got oil in it. Get ready here to burp the system. I guess here goes nothing. I already hooked up the battery now, see any smoke, so that's a good sign. I don't know what that uh, sound was. Huh. Maybe it was just air? I don't know. That was a weird little sound in the beginning. Oh, I see a little smoke. Oh, that's that's when I uh, I got a lot of anti-seas down there. Oh, vacuum leak. Look at that. That's what that noise was. All right, there we go. <laughs> I knew I heard something sucking in. Boy, that thing's purring real good. And the system's burping right now. I saw some bubbles. I think it works. <laughs> and check that out. No lights are on. Except for the door and the seat belt. Look at that. Anyways, I'm going to turn the heat up. But leave the fan on low so we can get that coolant nice and warm. Yeah, let's go to the back. I got a little steam, but I mean, it is cold. It hasn't ran in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And there might be residual. Oh man, no more sweet smell. Smells like it's supposed to. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm pretty happy. That was a lot of work. I think uh, if a guy didn't have to videotape the whole thing, you probably can get it done in a couple of good weekends, give or take whatever time it takes to get the heads done. I'm gonna keep an eye on this thing, let it warm up. So far, so good. I'll give you an update once I get it on the road. Nothing new leaking down here. That's just leftover coolant that I wiped up when I took everything apart. Running pretty smooth. Boy, I'm happy with it so far. I don't see any leaks. Looking good. Yeah, it's bubbling pretty good now. Thermostat must have opened up. Wanna rev it up a little bit, try to get more air out. I got no leaks, but I still have to put this whole front fascia plastic piece or whatever you want to call it. And when I was taking it apart, I broke a few of these. And on Amazon, I found, I don't know, I think these are a whole bag of these. Plastic plug, clips, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to take the time and this video probably ain't going to come out right away, but I'm going to try to put everything I ordered and bought that I bought from Amazon. We are affiliated or whatever you want to call it. So we do get a little kickback. Doesn't cost you anything, but helps the channel out, helps us out. Cause there was a lot of times when I was working on this thing and it was just kind of nice to have parts show up, you know, instead of running around all over town and finding out somebody didn't have something in stock. And I just drove across town, wasted half a day, you know, collecting crap that I needed. 
So anyways, I'm gonna do that. Feel free to check it out. I got an announcement package the other day and it was a cool set of Ray-Bans. I'm a driver, so this is gonna come in real handy. I just wanna say thank you to the generous person who sent me them Ray-Bans. I'll be using them. I've been driving the Honda Pilot around for a few days now and everything seems to be working great. I hope this video is really helpful for somebody that has a Honda Pilot that has to do what I just did. If you're interested, I made a video when I took this engine apart before I took the heads to the machine shop. And I'll put a link over here in the corner, kind of like up here. Thanks for the sunglasses, and remember, keep it on the sunny side.